So, do you want to give a quick introduction to episode three? Uh, I think you should. Oh, I did it twice. I did the last episodes. It's good for continuity. Okay. Welcome to episode three. Okay, crack on. <laughs> Notes there, what are you making notes about? Um, I don't know, well, nothing. I've just put on the first podcast episode two. <laughs> I've put 2.5, of course, three out of two. Okay, it was a good festival, wasn't it? Yeah, it was excellent. I had a really good time. None of those photos have surfaced yet, as far as I'm aware. So, that was good. yeah, well, I've got some I could publish if, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> have you? You're talking about the late night antics, which you know, it's risky to go into. From the from the the final night. Yeah. Are you expecting them to be published in some way? Oh no, I don't think. I don't think. No. Um, no, they um, they were not happy with me uh, splashing water in my potentially splashing water because I had to comment about this when I went to the hospital. All oh, right. Um, because, well, I think the main reason was that those contact lenses were like too old. I shouldn't have been wearing them. But because of the, the fountain water, I thought mm. that that would have been obviously a, an issue that caused the infection. So I had to mention it. Yeah, well, now because you're going to have to mention it to the listeners because all you've said is hospital and fountain water and eyes. Well, yeah. What, yeah, well, that's enough, isn't it? The, the... There were some antics on the last night of the festival, which resulted in you going to the accident and emergency ward. Sorry, that's not funny. Um, well, yeah. the following day, I went because my eyes were really, really soft. But the, but the reason was because I was wearing contact lenses that I shouldn't have been wearing. Is that all? I think so. But they but they had to take some. Oh, that's the other thing they had to do. They they had to take a swab sample of my eyes. And that was incredibly painful. I haven't yeah, seen. you said. But yeah, with sort of like a little, well, actually an extended, um, what do you call them, like a Q-tip, you know, yeah. bottom bud. Mm. It was scratched, like, well, it feels, it feels like it's scratching glass across the surface of the eye. They're just Horrible. like, obviously collecting the liquid. Well, because I had a swab for a COVID-19 test when I got back to the airport in Luxembourg. I found that was quite painful, just in the back of the mouth. And it's probably a similar thing. You know, they're collecting moisture with a swab. Okay. I can't, wouldn't have enjoyed that in my eye. Right. But, uh, yeah, okay. Well I, nearly, I nearly I punched the optician as he did it. What? <laughs> well, just out of reflex. Really? Because he said, oh, this is going to hurt a bit. And then, and then I could see the thing coming towards my eye. Oh. <laughs> I'm preparing myself for it. But it, uh, yeah, I, mean, I wasn't yeah. for the pain. And just out of reflex, my left arm just swung up. Didn't quite, you know, I kind of stopped it in time, but he, he kind of saw. <laughs> I mean, could they not use some kind of absorbent piece of paper or something? And then it's, it's less like a, a rod, you know, going towards your eye like a spear. Yeah, perhaps. I don't yeah, know. There must well, be something that, else they can use which is less threatening. I'm thinking. A piece of paper might, well, that would just get sort of saturated and then probably get attached to your eye, potentially. So I don't know if that would really work. There have to be something that can obviously plastic make contact and then be mm. moved. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was a little bit chaotic at the end there. With the Saturday night, and uh, well, yeah, it was Saturday night, and then I saw you on Sunday. And was it Sunday you went to the hospital? Well, it was Sunday night I went to the hospital. Yeah. yeah, so we met up with the intention of maybe recording this recording Sunday morning. But I think we were both too. Uh, I'm very different. Say that, I'm not sure I ever thought that would be 
in reality, really. Oh, okay. The, uh, I woke up and um, got my clothes on, and immediately there was a knock on the door saying, you need to check out. So there wasn't really much time to do anything, was there? <laughs> the room was a complete tip. I'm not proud of that. I left a whole stack of dishes that I had intended to wash, uh, towels in the wrong place, bed sheets. I was going to tidy it all up, but just no, I didn't have time. Uh, oh well. And then we went for a coffee, and then you were preparing to be late for your pickup, I think. And I went to get, because we neither of us had enough cash. I had to pay the cash machine. I came back, and then you yeah. just. Well, it, it seemed no, like you came you, back, and you said, "Okay, I'll go and pay," and you went inside. Oh, well, that's right. And uh, yeah, I, I apologise. I I see a tunnel, and I get mesmerised, and I walk towards the tunnel, which is at the back of the cafe, but. Obviously, it wasn't a spectacle to you, so you didn't expect me to go wandering into a tunnel. And you thought, yeah, been in the tunnel before. Yeah, <laughs> it was just a tunnel, but I don't know. I have a strange. Well, no, it's, it, it's a great tunnel, I guess. It connects to two other parts of town. Did they not use it in a previous Anima Fest? I seem they to remember can... passing through there. Oh, yeah, with some... and there were bicycles and balloons and things. Yeah, and also some yeah. VR pieces as well before but, but I think obviously with the situation this year they weren't able to do that. I was surprised it was open actually. Yeah, no, there, there were people going through there. Yeah, so then I mean, then I thought, I had assumed that you'd left already. So yeah. I, I left in hot pursuit towards your, towards your hotel. And, mm. And the weird thing is that I obviously came back that way, but I think because my eyes were so sort of blurry, I might have walked straight past. Actually, now I was probably on the other side of the street. Mm. And I, um, you know, I did rush back to the hotel and very nearly missed the car, but oh. managed, to get in it. <laughs> managed to get in it at the end. And then he uh, picked up a few of the French contingent on the way back to the airport. Here's Adrian Merigou like on his film Genius Loki. Thanks. How do you feel to be, have you been to Zagreb before for Anima Fest? Almost. Um, or is I've it your first to, time? I've been to Zagreb once, Yes. but it was for 24 hours and I was in a jury for a pitching session. Wow. And so I just land going to the pitching and, and uh, move what? to... Uh, Anima, to Animateca in uh, Ljubljana. Oh, okay. Oh, so there was a pitching in Zagreb and then just, also in... Just before the festival of... Uh, oh, you're recording me now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, like I say, there's a lot of sound, so I don't know how... But we will speak more tomorrow. There was... Um, there was uh, the um, Animateca festival, and so uh, Drashko and Sintis they organized a, a pitching session for an docu animated documentary. Uh, so it was um, um, with um, uh, someone from uh, Doc Leipzig, and so uh, I just had like uh, a few hours in Zagreb. We had this pitching session, and then we took the car and drove to. Ljubljana for Animateca. So when people ask me if it's my first time in Zagreb, I say almost. <laughs> because I try to, I walk around the city and try to to recall and uh, it was hard to match with my souvenir because I had so few. So now I can create some proper souvenir. Okay. So this, but this is your first time at Anime Fest? Totally, yes. And how are, how are you liking the festival so far? Uh, I like I came before many times and I felt like I, I, I missed so, so many editions and I'm a bit ashamed and... Uh, you should have missed this future editions. <laughs> <laughs> Come back again, make another film. Come on. Yeah, sure. How long does it take? To, to make a film? Yeah. Uh, this one, it took me... It depends if you consider the story. I start to... I wrote the first version in 2011, and but I was thinking about it... Uh, a long time. Yeah, uh, 
uh, when I was a teenager and uh, I, I started to proper, properly work on it in uh, like four years ago and it took me more or less three years. Okay, that's a long time. Okay, next yeah. film you have to make in like six months or something. Yeah, usually I, it, takes, it takes me way less time but this film was so personal that uh, it, was, uh, it was complicated. In the middle of the production of the film, uh, it switched from 8 minutes to 16 minutes and uh, there was some new element I had to add in the story because it's an animated documentary uh, based on my own personal story and to my family story so while I was doing the film we, we were talking about the film in the family and some new elements pop up and so it brings some new layers and new level of information and and uh, what I thought was a climax wasn't a climax and the climax pop up while I was making the movie so in terms of editing it was quite complicated I loved uh, Adrian's film Genius Loki Loki that was one of my favorites from the whole thing see that's one I haven't seen yeah no that's one because um, he didn't sort of over explain it he, he sort of lets you take your own meaning from it and so what I what I what I thought about it the meaning of the film wasn't necessarily what he intended but he didn't take that away from me by <laughs> by giving it a different um, spin but it's yeah no that was a cool film uh, Natko got an award for Arca didn't he was that Croatian award maybe yeah he got the Croatian yeah that was a good Croatian. film yeah, um, I really like Freeze Frame. Yeah, and also Symbiosis, probably my yeah. favorite, one of my favorites, certainly. Mm. Very happy. Was Freeze Frame the only stop motion one in the awards? I think it might have been. Yeah, I think so. Do you think there's usually a larger contingent of stop motion in Anime Fest, or is this about normal? Possibly, I think Ivana was commenting on this, that there were, weren't so many stop motion. I mean, technically, you could argue physics of sorrow is sort of stop motion as well. I would I mean, argue that. It's no. paint on glass, isn't it? Well, yeah, but you could argue that paint on glass is stop motion. Not really. It's, no. I mean, it's, 2D used to be paint on cellulose, celluloid. Yeah, but when you're reworking over, like, the image, you know, manipulating the... I mean, it, it, it's a. I mean, the physics of solar is a technique with wax, I think, as well as some new. Kind of but there's paint. no depth to it. There's no tactile quality to it. It's flat. It's a, uh, painting, think, painting over the previous frame is that's the same as straight-ahead animation, which you do have in 2D sometimes. You draw a frame, then you draw the next frame, then you draw the and there's no planning as yeah. such. So I, I, well, yeah, I would definitely say it's a. a a variant of 2D, but you're free to disagree with that. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to clutch a straw, was I guess, to include it in the bracket. Yeah, it's somewhere between the two, maybe, okay. um, because it is, yeah. But he did, did Theodore Rushev get an award? Yeah, he got. A special mention from Nancy, and I think you also yes. got the audience award. That was very surprising. There, there's a film, Disappear, which opened one of the programs, and it was well, I, I can't say it, it was not animation, um, but it was footage recorded from a video game, uh, Battlefield, or something like that, mm. and it had narration over the top of it, and um. It was all about how to, it's about a sort of movement of people being conscientious objectors, is that the right term, De like deserters during warfare, but they do it within a video game which is only there for, for war and they go and disrupt other people's games and things. And it was really interesting and nobody was talking about like, uh, it sort of stands out because it's not like the other animation methods there. It's all footage recorded from a video game. And it even got a, 
special mention at the end, so... Um, it's, that was one of the films I missed, but I, I had seen video game being used in short films at Anime Fest before. Have you? So, okay. 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 It sounds I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed uh, yeah, uh, Betty. Yeah, yeah Betty. I've seen yeah. Where's, the, Where's the Butter, Betty, and I need to go back and watch now Where's, Where's the Butter, Betty, because to see like which how much of that film is repurposed into into Betty? Um, but I enjoyed both. Both good films. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was great because it was at the previous edition of Animal Fest. Mm-hmm. Betty, so it was nice to see it. Yeah. Uh, the kind of revised version of the film, I suppose you could say, the complete film. Quite touching as well in places. It was like being a very colourful cartoon film. Natko Stepanichev on his film Arca. No, it's a wonderful film. So, congratulations. Thank you. Um, is this the first time you've seen it on the big screen? Or? Uh, no, no, I, I seen it. I seen it before. Yeah, in like yeah. a test projection, or is this the first no, time? No, it was on Croatian. Uh, fi- uh, the, the days of Croatian film. Oh. Uh, it was on Super Tune. I saw it I, uh, in Split. I saw it also, so I've seen it. A few times in Croatia. And, well, assuming, is, is it possible for you to travel to any festivals at the moment? Uh, uh, to travel yes, to it is possible, but it's, uh, 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 it's not for sure. It's very unlikely would I be able but, uh, or not. But uh, some festivals do uh, call uh, authors to come, like, for example, Montpellier, now in France or uh, some festival in Portugal and hopefully I will catch something, uh, I will manage to, uh, hopefully I will manage to go there. Congratulations. Uh, we'll speak no more. Problem. I'm sure. No problem. Right. Feel, uh, ask me whatever. whatever you want. What does your, what's the symbolism? What does your film mean? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Kintis Lundgren and Drashko Ivezic. Do you prefer Any... your film to be like opening the program or closing the program or somewhere in the middle? The I, I usually prefer the Friday night because usually this is where they put the funnest film. Yeah. yeah. So you know that it's like. A... But within the actual program itself. But like, then... Again, I suppose it depends so much on the other films yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but on, the other, on the other side, though, if they put you with other crazy, funny films, then you're... It's better that you're lost. Then it doesn't stand out so much, because it's yeah. like you're well, just it's, one it's of It's always nice to have a mixture anyway, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Naturally, I don't want to sit through... I don't normally want to sit through a program of, like, dark, depressing films. Yeah. I want... Maybe, so like maybe that some other. Well, yeah, but I don't <laughs> want to like <laughs> an hour, an hour and a half yeah. of it. <laughs> Isn't it usually best to go last because a lot of viewers have a short memory? Yeah. They walk away remembering the last film. Yeah, so. I do the same. It also depends, depends on the well. duration. Like it's like uh, let's say it's five-minute film or a twenty-five. You know? For example, with Arman, did these twenty-five minute films. It was very nice to have them at the end, you know, because then you basically—it's almost uh, this. They're kind of headliners, so you watch through. It's almost like a rock concert. You go through all these short films, and you wait the next Nick Park, you know, and then wow, you know, like a big, big expectation fulfilled. And it's like, a, but you have to have that kind of film in the program to put it at the end. It's, and it's not easy every year to find that kind of, uh, let's say, of, evergreens, you know, or blockbusters. Yeah. You know. In terms of vote, the public voting. Yeah, this is also so fair on the earlier films. Well, that's also true. You know, you have to. But it's if you have such a big, let's say, star in the program, yeah. you always have to count that probably the audience will vote for that star, you know, and, and then you know everything else will be accounted later. <laughs> Are you still making notes about what we're saying? Yeah. No, no. Shopping list. You no, are just... making notes. I can see you. 
I'm doodling now. Oh, uh, let me see the picture. <laughs> not <laughs> no, me. No, no. I'm drawing no, a picture for me. It's not really doodling. I'm just like drawing lines. Oh, it's keyed out in the blue screen. I can't see it. No, it's well. It's just a, a list of names. Oh, yeah. You can't, you can't see. Can't... Yeah, it's completely keyed out. <laughs> oh, there. There's not really much of a doodling. It's a list of the names of the. Uh... Oh, okay. People you mentioned before for the interviews. I don't know if uh, draw if writing counts as doodling. Does it? I always thought doodling was just drawing. No, well, I started doing a little star up here and some lines. Okay. It's, it's abstract. Yeah. 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 So that was Anima Fest 2020. We're we're grateful that it took place. We enjoyed it very much. Two and a half episodes. Two and a half podcast episodes. How did you, did you, how do you think the podcast would go? I know we shouldn't talk too much about the podcast on the podcast because that's a little bit, you know, self-indulgent, but did you think we'd do more or fewer episodes or what? I don't know. Okay, uh, let's move on. Possibly, well, possibly more, but shorter ones. Yeah. I think we did okay. To I think get we got to about considering how much, like how much with the other commitments, especially with the performance. Very yeah, maybe we should talk about the performance. Well, again, that's us, isn't it? It's sort of, you know. Well, no, go ahead and you can edit, edit out whatever is suitable <laughs> and what's not. Uh, Tom, how did the performance go? What do you think? I think it went, I think it went pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I... I think the intention originally was to have maybe more input from the guests. They would suggest things for me to put on the uh, reel. Um, but I spoke to people afterwards and they all said, you look so furiously concentrating and, and serious. I didn't want to break your flow and so I didn't come and talk to you. Um, but I think this is just the way people perceive me. I'm not, I'm not really that serious. Maybe I frown too much or something. And I just look like I'm focusing and so they don't approach me. But yeah, I, I would have welcomed people coming up and giving me suggestions. It would have made your your life a bit easier, especially towards the yes. end. Yes, yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling to get some, not towards the end, I think towards the, towards the beginning and the middle, it was difficult to produce enough text to keep up with your animation, which is further down the pipeline. Towards the end, I really got into a flow and I could have gone for even longer, potentially. But uh, I enjoyed the experience, hopefully. Thankfully, it didn't tip down with rain on us the whole time. Yeah, we were really lucky because the following night was four buckets. Oh, because we, we, yeah, we spent a long time thinking about where to actually have the performance. And um, it wasn't until, you know, right when we began it that we actually settled on a location because the weather was good. Essentially, yeah. Well, I'm re I'm really satisfied. With it. I think uh, we we had a good reaction, despite not having as much interaction as perhaps we, we had it ended. I well, I did at one point. Um, I typed something about an observer who was standing just to the side of the performance, and then she came around the camera and looked directly at what I just typed. It was a little bit embarrassing. But she didn't say anything about it, <laughs> so I don't know. Did you, maybe perhaps you insulted her? <laughs> Did you? No, she wasn't like, she didn't, re <laughs> she didn't read and then just go dead quiet. She was like reading through the comments there. Maybe she, she just luckily scanned over it, I don't know. Right. Yeah. What did you, how did you describe it? I wrote something along the lines of, an observer um, watches but is afraid to break the line of camera and approach the performance and then she did exactly that um, <laughs> and read what I just wrote but didn't say anything about it. <laughs> Behaved in the way that you described her. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like, a, um, what's that film with Will Ferrell? Um, Stranger Than Fiction. Stranger Than Fiction, yeah, but maybe in reverse? Yes, in, no. 
No, it's the same, isn't it? You, you hear the narration, then you see the action. Yeah. 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 This isn't going to make much sense to anyone that hasn't seen it. But it's available online, so if anyone's listening to this... Yeah, good plug. Uh, Thomas, Thomasvelder.com Yeah. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, check it out. It's, uh, it's in the interview with uh, AnimaFest Insights. They, they, they included a low-res clip of the performance on there, so it's, it's immediately available to see. Q&A man, Alexi Huno. How do you feel to be back in Zagreb for Anima Fest? Really? I, do you, you want the truth? I think that's one of the best festivals i ever been to, and it's... Not really, I mean, it's not because I'm here, but that's, you know... I, I don't know a lot of festivals. I'm not like a lot of directors who went to thousands of festivals. I know few, really few festivals, but Zagreb is like... I don't know, really close to my heart because it's a really human festival and when you have parties, everybody's there. You don't have like to need tickets like, you know, in other festivals saying, I'm important. And uh, I think that to dance, to have parties is as important as to show films, but still to show films is important. So it's, uh, for me, it's like, yeah, I mean, I couldn't believe not to be here this year. What about for your own festival? What are the plans? Is it possible to make it? Because you have a festival in Paris. Right? Yes, actually, I'm. Uh, you got a prize in the festival last year. You got a prize. Right, have you got it? <laughs> no, I do. It was well, actually, like a huge honor. Actually, we don't have any. Uh, we don't get paid for the festival, so. But no, but you know, for me it's important because I, I I'm doing the selection alone. And uh, for me it's important because, like I said, you're doing, you're taking so much time to make a film. So if you're not selected, and uh, again it's a small, but you can come to me, and I won't say that's not my fault. That's the other ones, you know. A lot of people do that, and I can tell you, I'm sorry, your film is not in because of that, because of that. And that's quite important for me. But I mean, no days. Yeah, uh, we should have done the festival in September, but no, we should have done it in November, but no. So now we're waiting for February, maybe. Oh, well, fingers crossed. That's it, but you never know, you know. So wait, you're, you're the selection team, and you're also the jury then? <laughs> so ah, that's, like that, that should be interesting. <laughs> no, but you know what? I, I, I understood, and because of other festivals, that to pick the jury, when you are really keen on the selection that you did, is the most important thing. But really, because... I won't say, but some festivals, you know, just pick because, you know, that there is, the country will be, you know, the, the country of the year in the festival, so you pick people. And if you are really proud of your selection, you need to pick juries that are really reflect diversity. And for example, I take somebody who take, who make documentaries, not animated, live action documentaries. I will take people who do sounds. Uh, I, I, I will take people, because I want people to talk. And uh, the thing that I'm proud in my festival, that's one of the things, is I complain uh, for a long time, even in Zagreb, that the price are always the same. It's the Grand Prix, special price of the jury. And what I did is I, uh, you have a, a best direction, best directing, best screenplay, uh, best uh, interpretation, best acting, because, you know, you can be, and that's important to have that. So, uh, yeah. And 
important to have names. For example, for two years in a row in uh, in, in, in Piaf, actually uh, the, the people who won uh, the Cristal in Annecy won best direction in Piaf. And I thought it was interesting because maybe sometimes it's not the best film, but you like the way the director did it, and you want to that, and you have names. I mean, if you said to Annecy, you remember three years ago, maybe you will have the title but not the name. And I mean, look, there is three directors, four in front of me right now, and you are people. And you don't, we don't know your name. I, I'm a teacher, and sometimes you know, I tell my students, you know, remember the film, and they don't remember name because in 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 Cannes, the best director, you know, it's gonna be, I don't know, Cohen, you know, the Cohen brothers gonna win, and you will have their name in Nancy or here. The name come after the name came after the uh, comes after the uh, the title of the film. So we remember the title, but not the names. And it's important that people understand that, well, they, they are human beings doing those films, and you are great directors. And uh, we have to know your names as we know, I don't know, Scorsese, or I, I don't have all the names, but, uh, but really, it's important for me. I think you annoyed people going around to them with a the microphone. Uh, maybe he's not. I don't think so. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I don't think he did. I don't think we did. Occasionally, there was one on the uh, Saturday night. Um, there was a small group of guests talking outside, and I came out. I, I was going to go to the cash machine. Well, actually, I was hoping that the car was still doing like ferrying guests over to the venue. Right. So my plan was to like hop in the car if it was going to go back to the SC yes, cinema. Yes, I remember. Yeah. And get cash up, but the car—I don't know. I think it finished that uh, those routes, so mm. it didn't go up. So then I sort of eavesdropped on the conversation and sneaked my microphone in. That's really crafty. <laughs> because at the beginning, I was I, I was saying, that, you know, we need to get permission when we go and talk to people, and this is the main thing I'm worried about. And that we at the beginning we were yes at the other end of this scale. And it sounds like on Saturday night you were going all the way to the other possible limit of that scale, and not the end of the scale, where you're literally just eavesdropping on people with a microphone. Well, I think we would need permission to use anything, okay. so and we'd ask afterwards. Who was it? Can you tell me secretly? What did they say? I don't. I, I wasn't quite drunk. Okay. Good food at the festival as well. Yeah. The spread at the picnic was great. Actually, the picnic. Oh, was... lovely. Um, the turtles. You should get one of those out of the pond. Crack it open. Wonderful. Well, the the tour guide was saying, "Oh, don't look at the turtles." <laughs> Don't look at the turtles. We have turtles in the park. You can't look at them. What does he mean? Well, they're not supposed to be there. <laughs> I think they're, they're, really? Yeah, they're not, you know, native. But, so, but why would he say don't look at them? I mean, like, is there something <laughs> wrong with them? Is it breaking the law in some way? I think Maybe they're, they're, they're supposed to care for them if they're on their premise, premises. I think he's, he's a bigger fan of flora than fauna. <laughs> Maybe it comes down to that. <laughs> wow. There's a flock of flamingos have just landed over there, but don't look. There's a tree <laughs> right here. Yeah, look at this tree. Great tree. There was, yeah, beautiful spread of food, food inside there. Lovely. And the weather was awesome, just for. It was pretty good for the whole week, actually. There wasn't that much bad weather. I think a, a festival that ends on a, on a downpour. Think, yeah, you know, if you if you've got a great forecast for the rest of the week, and then the final night suddenly, because it was after the the closing ceremony, suddenly it was just buckets of rain like, coming down. Yeah, well, you're you're only saying that because it it played into your attention seeking behaviour, along with some other people who shouldn't be mentioned. <laughs> Wouldn't have been the same if it was you know nice weather. Well, I can. I was the third to join in with that. It's all, it's all because of Mr. Why Not, isn't it? 
Hey, why not? <laughs> I wouldn't say his name, but listen to episode one. The clues are there. <laughs> the museum's not going to have us back again, I'm telling you. That's the, that's the one time. No, it was a good uh, dramatic ending to the festival. Um, nothing, nothing went badly awry, as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware. No, no, no police call out, no, no casualties. Well, apart from you on Sunday, but you don't really come. No. So, <laughs> yeah. So this is the end. Thanks for listening, everyone. Um, with any luck, see you next time. Bye. Goodbye.